the Centurion pub. The Centurion pub was a pub that I used to get the bus to go to Shelley Park on, but also pretty near the airport and stuff like that. And um, now the Centurion pub at that time, there was, a, was actually a referee's pub mm. back in the day, very, you know, kind of well to do and whatever. I went in there on a Friday afternoon, say half past four, five o'clock, and it was like a Saturday night. People were going crazy and jumping up doing jukebox, horse racing zone of terror. What the fuck is going on here? It's went doing all this happening in here. So <laughs> I've picked the wrong venue. Bob appears and uh, he just never this is part of it actually. He n- it never even occurred to him that there were people doing that. Because they carry this confidence. It's been bred into them. Right. No problem, no worries. Nothing. Guys like us be sitting there going, watching points, going, we have a it's right. kick off at any time. Uh-huh. He's sitting there going, so what if it does? What's it, why does that bother me like? Mm-hmm. And so we chatted and stuff and um, built up the story. And so went to a crap Italian restaurant in Christophan that night and you know talked to Annie. And then, of course, I brought him here. Now, I've been to Bob's house. <laughs> and it's a fucking mansion. It's a fucking Russian oligarchs type house. You know what I mean? I brought him here. And I was, this is when the working class thing kicked in me, Richard, because I was right. just like, what the fuck is this guy going to think when he trolls up here, you know? So he never he never said a word. Mm-hmm. Not a fucking word. And I didn't, th- I don't think, Richard, I mean, he was a nice guy, mother, but I didn't think he was thinking, I'm not going to say anything because I'm nice. I yep. think he just didn't care. Just no interest. Yep. I'm interested in this, you, whatever. Mm-hmm. I was still, um, Married at the time, right? Yeah, wife was here and that kind of thing, so it was fine. Had a drink, whatever, and um, that was that. And so you know, kind of talking and whatever. And then um, as we went through the year, he started to say things that really were like, "Are you serious?" <laughs> yeah, that he didn't really think were big things, even as a sales what right? But that I knew were huge. One of them, obviously, was Celtic's financial performance was better in 1993, 1994 than Rangers. I said, wait a minute, would you just stay there? He says it again, I said, that's, that's impossible. Wait a minute, here. We almost went bankrupt. I was on Celtic's for change. You're the fucking outside the car park. I was boycotting games. I'm telling you, can you prove that? Yeah. Showed me the figures. was in the film, in the book, company's house. I'm like, we fucking chased a board out of Celtic Park. Because we thought they were stealing our money Aye. and running us into the ground. And you're fucking telling me that Rangers were in mere debt and had mere creditors than we did. And he was like, yeah, what's the big deal? Aye. I said, what's the big deal? Do you think he was oblivious to that because yeah. he's not... I'm not tuned into the media. I don't worry about that crap. Is that, is that what you Aye. all Aye. thought? It just, it just wasn't a big thing. His big thing was, you have to understand that there was this thing called the Edinburgh Establishment upon which David Murray was at the top of the heap for many, many, many years and was able to use to propel Rangers to the top of Scottish football, try and get them to the top of European football and absolutely try and destroy Celtic. That's what you need to get your head And of course, I'm like, well, hold on a minute here, the end of the establishment, I've never even heard what well, you was that even exist. And so, the initially, the thing that I knew about cheating was the asterisk, which was the Barry Bonds thing, which was kind of in the trailer, and yeah. you know, that kind of, had to establish that. And initially I'd say to him, this book should be, I said, the asterisk, he said, aye, that's good, I. I said, this should be called Celtic versus Edinburgh Establishment. And he was like, no, 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 it was the, it's the other way about. <whistles> Celtic were against, they were against Celtic. I was like, oh, right, I Good boom. point. And, and that kind of ties in with your dad's logic with the Celtic V Rangers aye, thing, aye, aye, exactly. getting it things in the right like, order. Right, let's do that. So <laughs> I was like, right, I need to go out and speak to him about this is what's going to go in the book. So we go out go to his house, he picks me up at the airport, we drive, and uh, and even then, which I have to say, like, it was like late at night, I go to, he picked me up in Frankfurt, mm-hmm. and off we drive into the well blue yonder. Mm-hmm. And I must admit, I was thinking, any good out here. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and so we get to his house, which he built for his rubble. Oh, right. It was nothing, and he put his specifications. Okay, amazing house. And he was like, I'll be honest with you, I've been having sleepless nights about this book. And I'm thinking, oh, fuck, that's the last thing I need to hear now, like, you know what I mean? So after a long, because as I say, Bob was no the sort of guy that I'd ever be a friend of. You know, he's a Tory, he's. 
certain views on things and argue like fuck about it. I mean, we did argue like fuck about it, that kind of thing. So he eventually was like, we, we agreed on we should take the mayor titillating stuff out. There were certain things in it that were, they didn't really add anything to the story, mm -hmm. but were sort of titillating stuff, tabloid esque stuff about certain people that were in it, like David Murray Jr.'s girlfriend and things like that. Oh, this it meant absolutely none of the story, but oh, I sort of, because I, I was in the opinion that I throw it and fucked up. Mm -hmm. No, 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 I see, it's going to take away, but so eventually we agreed that, and then we was agreed, um, and there's another big aspect of the story which we couldn't put about because we couldn't stand up, which right. was. Uh, which is in the e-book mm -hmm. um, that's coming out, which is which was what that was all about, and that will be interesting to folk because a lawyer has been in the media since, um, and then lawyers got involved, you know, because right. because he had to make sure because at he, his behest, aye, was because, aye, 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 because mm -hmm. he had to had to keep the cover of the anonymity there, uh, couldn't have too many things pointing at him, saying it must have been that bastard that said this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he kept repeating with these bastards are so litigious, you know, if you see one thing and all that kind of thing. And eventually we got to a point where it was like, that's what we're going to have. Right. Then, of course, we were going to have mind maps in the book, as you know, and, and cue codes and all that kind of thing. Eventually we go out. And then um, I done an interview with Beyond the Waves and Graham um, in the September, and I started to drip out some of the information that was in the book and it just went mental. Now when did you become comfortable? Because there's Bob gets in touch, Celtic Connection, etc. So like he's rough here. He'd like he's the bits, but he's rough mm -hmm. you're missing the point. And he throws stuff at you. And then he comes over and then he sees you and then he goes back and maybe in that case he's like, oh wait a minute, maybe I've kinda of jumped in a bit yeah. without thinking here I need to see my lawyer and stuff. That's for his side. You've been approached out the blue by a guy, and mm -hmm. he's throwing it, right, what about this? Hey, what about, oh, and have a wee look at this document. What, you know, how does that unfold for you, thinking, right, I need to check that, and then I'm going to have a look at this document. Do you know what I mean? When does yeah. it all click into place for you? Well, I, there was quite a few people who, at that time, were almost making a career out of Rangers things. Right. And the information that I was getting didn't tie in with what they were saying. Right. And I started to think, oh, um, and I suppose that Bob had an ear about him. They just he's no lion, right? Okay, so, so was it more the human aspect? Was it yeah. something you can't write and down? Then, I, and then therefore right. everything I could ask him about stuff, he would tell me, right? And then two months later that would come true, and I'd be ah, like, right, okay. this guy knows what he's doing. The other aspect there was that you know I was in my I was sixteen in nineteen ninety. Mm -hmm. So when I was properly growing up in pubs and stuff like that, I was right in the midst of the year of nine in a row, mm -hmm. and I suffered massively at that point, as we all did. I never missed a silly game, and the entire time Rangers were nine in a row, I never missed one silly game, and suffered for it. You know, every time I went to the pub and all that kind of thing. And the question that was asked to me at the start of it, through it, and especially when I was getting threats and all that kind of thing, was why do you bother putting yourself through it? And it reminds me of, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen it, Richard, the, the, the programme that Alan Clark done called The Firm, with Gary Oldman. Oh, he plays yes, the West Ham yes. Casual. Aye. And his wife is giving him this, why do you do this, why do you do this? And he's joking away, joking away, which is what I do all the time, joking away, joking away. And then he turns around and he just says to her, I have told you, I have just got to have him! Talking about his enemy, and that's what it became really like for me for David Murray. Right. Now, as the project rolled out at that point, before the actual book comes out, uh -huh. I realised that what Bob was saying to me was, money's coming back. Right. He's coming back. Okay. And this is how he's going to come no back. What you've heard. Aye. This is... this is a college project. It talks about the Green Belt of Edinburgh. If this guy gets us through, he's coming back. He's gone back to the Rangers. Everything's going to be the same again. And that's all right. So quickly I realised that what he was saying to me and what I realised was that our goal was to stop that. Some of the stuff I've detailed in the ebook that's coming out, you know, in terms of, I mean, I, this who's here was the police came to the door, so it's going to get blown up in two days. I had to go up to Aberdeen, my mate Sam. Folk tried to run me over in a car, um, bullets in the post. All that kind of thing happened. And all, and I never even mentioned it, as I say, a detail in the book. I never mentioned Maester Owner. And people always think that it was all about abuse 
and it was all about threats. And yeah, that's prevalent. And yeah, it happens. And yeah, that's the reason why I haven't been able to reveal the location of the Premier. Because if I did, scumbags, if they get it, would try and destroy it. Correct. That's how it happens. And you never know, you know, you're talking about 400 people here over two days. Aye. One in the person just go, oh, it's there. And that's it finished. But I'm telling you, Richard, the opulent significance for the for the good stuff. The good stuff has been phenomenal. Excellent. Primarily the first time, the first thing is, the language towards David Murray changed. Suddenly, people were writing about him mm-hmm. in no and glowing terms. People, I saw an article in the Telegraph that, Telegraph that basically quoted parts of the ass this year. Never credited it, but quoted it. I had Stuart Cosgrove basically tell about a whole chapter in it. Again, no credit in it. Um, Peter Lawwell mentioned a bit of it and a bit one day. Again, they never get credit, but it's, no, that's not, I'm, I'm not interested in that, you know what I mean? What they, did Bob say after the book appeared? To be honest with you, Bob got a bit jealous. Suddenly, if you've been a guy and he wanted to have some credit, but he's in the background as a source, and that caused a wee bit of consternation, you know? I'll say to you now, which I'll not say to anybody, the, the book launched at the Blackfriars, Bob was there. Nobody knows that, but he was there. I mean, there's another thing I'll tell you, Richard, is that the, the journalists I spoke to, speak to every day would shock people, absolutely shock people, and especially with some of the things they've done for me. You would never believe it. Yeah. Never believe it. One of them is one of the biggest moaning face cunts in the world on Twitter. There's a, there's a clue. <laughs> um, who's done incredible things for me. But I spoke to them about that, sources. Mm-hmm. And they gave me advice about how Glenn Gibbons gave me a lot of advice. God right. rest him. God rest him indeed. Because Glenn Gibbons got in touch with me and was like, fucking hell, this is a bit heavy duty and all that kind of thing. And he told me who to trust and know who to trust. Right. And uh, a few people who still sidle up to me now as journalists who like to put themselves out there as man of the people. Glenn Gibbons warned me about them at a time when I was like, oh no, they're fantastic. And he was 100% right. That's the first thing. Um, but they gave me advice about sources and how to talk to them and how to cultivate them and all that kind of because that's what you want to do. You don't want to sit there and how's your life? Because yeah, just give me the fucking story. Just... And so that was that. So I'd done all that and as I say, Bob got a wee bit jealous, I think, because I was getting sort of, oh, it's him and that kind of thing. And he's thinking, oh, how am I not getting credit because you're a fucking source and you're in the background. You just want me to just the, tell everybody who you are? for the anonymity to begin with. So how did he explain to you as a source what the Edinburgh establishment was? You know, because, you know, is it, oh, it's all the rich people in Edinburgh? No, 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 no. Oh, well, it's all the financial people? No, 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 no. It's yeah. a certain group, set, subset. You know, how did he explain that to you for, at the start, something you just don't know of? It was, uh, aye, it's a good question, actually, because, you know, as he said, he's, you try to explain it, and it's a bit like, you know, it's massive. It's like a meeting attack with all this kind of information coming in, you're like, whatever. Because um, just to interrupt, because one of the things you got right at the start, I remember you saying was everybody was just saying, "Oh, aye, the Masons." Aye. No, it's not aye. that. It's, aye, there was know. a lot of that when the before the book came out. Oh, that's the book about the Edinburgh Masons, uh-huh. and that was another thing I got abused for because uh, there are some people there who make a career out of talking about the Masons. Right. And I would say to them, these people are above the Masons. Right. They might be members, but they didn't need the Masons. So there's maybe an overlap. And what would happen would be people who were into all that kind of thing would go, oh, wait a minute, he's got to talk about something that overlaps that. Fuck him. And, and so I would get abuse for that as well. Right. So that was fine. But then um, what actually, I had to go there. Now, we, for where we are now, we could walk there in maybe 25 minutes to the, the hub. Right. And what I, what I tried to do... You can't really do it with a book, but what I really tried to do with the film was bring that place to life and actually right. show point Visual. cameras uh-huh. at these streets and these golf clubs and these leafy suburbs and uh-huh. say, this is it. This is where it all happened. Mm-hmm. And um, it fucking really, it really angered me, Richard, because for most, for 33 years of my life, I've been a mile and a half away from <laughs> Going through all that hell, and I was like, Christ, you know what? Fucking hell, if I'd known that in the 90s, <laughs> He's I, could just maybe, there. You know, I could have smashed a few windies maybe or something, you know. But, <laughs> um, but I, and so it was a hit, you know, it took me about three months to get my head around it. Right. So that's, I realised really quickly.